<laughs> anyway, he's, he's lugubrious, he's idiosyncratic, he's jejune. So it's like the good old days, this, doesn't it? He's, <laughs> he's insouciant, he's... Oh, uh, see for yourself. Norman Lovett. Norman love it. <laughs> it's my real name. I'd like a pound for every time someone said love it. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have about six or seven pounds by now. <laughs> I went to a secondary modern school in Clacton-on-Sea. And I left that school with one O-level. <laughs> but they caught up with me and made me bring it back. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sort of a slow comedian, really. <laughs> That's what people say. But there's no rush, is there, really? <laughs> Just a matter of being economical, really. <laughs> <sighs> Had a shy heckler once. Heard. <laughs> 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 Just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> Just going to get a drink of water now, so the camera can come down with me. I use my legs for this because, you know, it's bad for your back if you bend over. And you never get cats and dogs complaining about backache because they're on all fours and it puts the weight equally on the back, you see. So if you do get backache, this is the part of my act where I like to help people, you know. <laughs> uh, walk around on all fours and... But don't go shopping because... <laughs> Well, you'd have to wear shoes on your hands or something. <laughs> be stupid, that would, wouldn't it? And where you're being served in the shop, they wouldn't see you anyway. So, I mean... <laughs> oh. Still tastes the same. <laughs> These are my arms. <laughs> Just the two. <laughs> I like to bring them into the act because I used to play guitar um, when I first started. I'm in my fifth year now as a comedian. That's what I am, a comedian. <laughs> I actually get paid, you know, to, <laughs> for just coming out and saying this sort of stuff. You know, it, just, it beats me, really. I just. <laughs> but, uh, I like to feature my arms because they became redundant when I gave up the guitar in the act, you know, and so there they are, these, you know, just. Doing a little tapping now, just to get a little rhythm going. <laughs> I was eating a hamburger. I ate it, just finishing off the last bit, and the hook struck. I didn't know it was bait. 
I went through the ceiling, through the roof, up to the clouds, where God reeled me in. <laughs> he had a keep net there with Agatha Christie in one of them. <laughs> George Orwell was in another one. George said, hello, Norman. I just nodded because I was coming in pretty quick. <laughs> God brought me in. He took me off the hook and threw me back. <laughs> and that's why I'm here now. I landed here. I wanted to be a penguin. <laughs> uh, I think the lifestyle is quite nice, really, a penguin. The swimming's good, the fish catching I quite like. It's when they come into those rocks and land, they bounce around a bit. <laughs> but they soon get up and stand with their friends. And I think I'd like to do some of that, really. I wouldn't mind doing that, really. <laughs> secondary school I went to. <laughs> it's, it's, good. it's good to laugh, isn't it? So, I do it sometimes. <laughs> we had one teacher there. Well, we had lots more than one. <laughs> it's just one I'm talking about now. <clears> His <throat> throat's going a bit. Smoking. I want to replace it with sex. And I thought, 20 a day. <laughs> One teacher, we had... <laughs> oh, it's nice to laugh, it really is. <laughs> Soon get back to normal. <laughs> One teacher, a music teacher we had, a very large teacher indeed, had a great big black Rover 90 and used to drive it across the playground while we were playing in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget the day he hit a first year and that first year remained attached to his grill <laughs> until I left the school. Good job this microphone isn't a snake, isn't it? <laughs> it really is a good job. Come on, board now. <laughs> <laughs> when you do gigs, this is called a gig, and I do lots of gigs in London. I looked up gig in the dictionary, and it said, light rowing boat. <laughs> so I do lots of light rowing boats. <laughs> Sometimes you stay at people's houses or flats, you have a drink with them afterwards, and this happened with a young couple of art students who put me up. And I slept on the couch. She woke me up in the morning with a cup of coffee and proceeded to show me around the flat at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You just, you just don't appreciate things like that at that time, do you, really? No, you don't. No. <laughs> then she said, let's go into the bedroom and wake him up. So I went into the bedroom and the whole room is red. Got these red curtains and the sun's streaming in. And the whole room is red. So I went, goodness me, this is a bit much. It hit me. So she said, when you wake up in the morning and you part the curtains, it's like coming out of the womb like a freshly born baby each day. I thought, you know, it's a good job she only gave me coffee and not eggs and bacon or something. <laughs> then I thought to myself, I've got brown curtains. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for listening.
I'll tell you what I hate. You! I hate you! No, I hate those watches. I do hate you, actually, but that's by the by. No, I hate those watches that bleep on the hour and kill blind people at traffic lights. <laughs> Let's, diaries are very good. Now let's bring on the next act of the evening because uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, well, I'd like to introduce Lenny Bruce, but he's dead, unfortunately. <laughs> so instead, a worthy substitute, another fellow Scot, like myself, more or less. Well, at least he lives in Edinburgh anyway. And here he is, Norman Lovett. Ready to drink, it says on here. Of course it is. <laughs> Saves it bending down. Um, getting on now. Getting older now. <laughs> yeah, it's true, I live here now in Edinburgh. I've lived here for a year now. And mainly, one of the main reasons I moved up here was to get away from all the comedians in London. <laughs> Now they're all up here, still they'll go back tomorrow, so <laughs> get a shot of them for another year. It's very different in Edinburgh to London, and more polite, nice to you up here. I remember I was here down here about a month, and one morning I had to go and get a couple of 60-watt bulbs from the shop. A particularly busy day I had. <laughs> always been a bit musical. <laughs> Popped along to Morningside, just had a stroll down. Then I saw the electrical shop, I went inside, nice little ding on the bell when I went in. There it is, and I enjoyed that. <laughs> and I went up to the counter, there's a man there in brown coat and collar and tie, and well-groomed, very well-groomed man, about 55, 56. 57 could have been a push shot. I said, 260 watt, two of your best 60 watt bulbs. <laughs> and he said, I'll just try these for you. So, and, he, and he screwed them in the socket to say, and he didn't do it quickly to say, oh, that works, that works. He put it in and stood back with me and we watched it glow. <laughs> we stood back and admired it. And he said, yeah, that's a good one you got there. <laughs> put them in a bag, he wrapped them up and he put the cellar tape on. Sometimes I say, last a blast, I get muddled up at home sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I cut myself and put some cellar tape on, but you can watch it healing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just... 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 <laughs> I bought some milk the other day, I mean, I do it a lot, I do it a lot. And it says, open other side. Not, not please, you know. No, 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 no bloody, <laughs> so bloody rude. So rude, just. I mean, I don't expect them to say, oh, hello, Norm, how are you today? But could you open the milk on the other side? Thanks very much indeed. <laughs> oh, just rude, just rude. I was thinking today, I was having a little think, and <laughs> you know when you toast brown bread, how do you know when it's done? Don't <laughs> right, I'm going home now. Thanks very much. Norman Lovett there. Norman Lovett, and it's a good job he was speeding tonight, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was talking about the, how horrible it is. London, it does get you down. You know, London, you know, I, uh, you know, London, it's dirty, nothing works. There's dog turds everywhere, you know, and that's just my flat. <laughs> oh, it's like being in America. <laughs> Roger Daltrey does that in the Who. 
And I thought, if he drops it on the first song, he, no respect from the audience from then on, the gig's ruined. You know, that's rock and roll for you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a rock and roll singer, because it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking today about rock and roll and a lot of the singers that have gone into acting like David Bowie and Sting that have tried acting, you know, and not really quite pulled it off, you know. Um, <laughs> and vice versa. I mean, Sam Fox was a model who went into singing as well, you know. So, But I think the most successful ar artist... Sorry, there's an echo. I keep hearing myself and, I, and I'm not laughing. <laughs> The most successful artist is Paul Newman, great actor, film star, and his salad dressing. <laughs> great, great stuff. Well, think about it, think about it. It was a complete success. I've been in this business a long time, and I've worked with a lot of acts, but one act I worked with a few years ago, uh, sort of in the music hall days, was the alphabet man. He was a contortionist. He used to contort his body, like there's a bit of an A there. Look. I'm no good, I can only do I. You know, so. <laughs> and we did, a bit, we did a big tour. We took in about nine dates in a year. <laughs> and he used to go on before me. He went on and did the alphabet. That was his act, A to Z. And, yeah, that was the act, you know. Mainly got a polite applause. And, uh, then I'd come on and do, do my act. But one night in Doncaster, the audience went mad. He came off and they were going mad. I, and I said, Bert, get back out there. They want you to do some more. You know. I said, listen, there's a chant going up. And there's a big chant going, we want the alphabet man back on this stage now, so there's going to be some trouble in this theatre tonight. <laughs> I said, Bert, get back out there. And he said, Norm, he said, I've, I've, we were very close. He said, <laughs> said, Norm, I've done my act. I don't know what to do. I said, well, give him some more letters. Give him some more, you know, <laughs> do it backwards or something, you know. He said, I said, what about doing some numbers, you know? He said, I've thought of doing numbers. He said, but once you get to nine, you're going to need someone else in the act, you know. <laughs> And financially, it's just not going to work out, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I gave him a push, a theatrical shove, you know, get out there and get them, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm steeped in showbiz. <laughs> Shoved him out, and he went out, and he did encore, the letters E-N-C-O-R-E, -E, and they liked that, they enjoyed that, and uh, it was a good night, it was a good night. Then we came to the end of the tour. <coughs> Excuse me. The spotlight just went out up there, that one. There must be trouble with it. I'll sort that out later. <laughs> we came to the end of the tour and we were at the railway station. I said, see you then, Bert. And he said, see you, Norm. Nice working with you and all the things you say to each other. You know, all the best break legs in the future and, you know, all that sort of rubbish. Then the the bad news filtered through to me about two weeks later. He'd got to his station and, and he was forever rehearsing. If you went for a drink with him, he'd go up to the bar and order a drink and he'd be a letter P or something. And the barman would be going, oh, there's a letter P there, you know. And he had trouble getting served sometimes. And he had to walk home from the station. It was downhill and he was decided to rehearse the letter O. <laughs> and he gathered speed, and he tried a Q, stuck his head out, you know, to, <laughs> to try and slow down, you know, but it didn't make any difference, you know. And by the time he hit the wall at the bottom of the hill, uh, it was all over. His career came to a full stop. I oh, know, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to me. Good night, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much for the uh, welcome. <laughs> Straight from your hearts. <laughs> no, it's nice to see all your smiling faces. <laughs> Although there's a, there's a lady there who's not sure. <laughs> You're not sure about me, are you? You're not sure yet. <laughs> but I'll win you over. <laughs> One way or the other. The thing about um, the gazoo is that I was thinking about football matches, and you know the players, the, the rage, the players lose their tempers, don't they? You go, really ref and all that, they get really cross. I can't do it, I'm not really a method actor. I, I would have to be in a game and sort of someone would tackle me then to get up and get really cross. I can't do it now. It's not easy. And, uh, so I thought, I think the thing that causes a lot of the trouble is the whistle, the referee's whistle. It pierces, it goes right to the centre of their heads and they just go mad and just go... <laughs> you know, they just go, oh, I'll let him, I'll let him and I'll kick him. So if he had a gazoo... <laughs> then the players would go, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just could you blow it one more time for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get on with the game. But everyone would be smiling. It'd be great. We'd enjoy the matches and things. Lizards. <laughs> hey, those lizards. You know, I mean, they just. If there's a good advert for not lying in the sun, look at a lizard. Have a look at the skin, you know, the thick, scaly skin and all the crap. They're there and they don't wear sunglasses either. <laughs> They're just in the sun. I mean, it'd be good if they had little sunglasses on just to help them out, you know, with it not, not hurt their eyes. But they do, they just hang about. But the good thing about the lizard, which is what I'm going to tell you, is that the tails come off if a predator catches a lizard. The tail will come off and he can escape. So I thought it'd be quite good if our heads came off and we could grow another head. And I'm leaving the station one evening, walking home, and this mug, mugger, thugger, thugger, bugger, <laughs> whatever you want to call him, grabs me round the head like that and goes, give us your money, you bull git. You know? <laughs> and I look up at him and say, I haven't got any money on me, because it's in my jacket pocket. <laughs> and that's on my body which is running up the road. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your laughter. <laughs> Good night, thank you. This is a good one. You like this? This is it. If you're waiting for a train or something, it's busy. Loads of people everywhere and you're saying, oh God. Yeah. Take me, get my old glove out, inflate it, <laughs> semi-inflate it. Just hold it like that. <laughs> right. you, and you extend the arm like that. Keep a serious face on. Not arrogant, not magician's face. Just <laughs> get onto the train and slowly deflate. <laughs> And in no time at all, you'll have the seat of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who we got here? <laughs> Bit of fun. <laughs> I, I never worry about the crowds when I go to Oxford Street, so I always take a clipboard with me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Clipboard gag. <laughs> no, everyone moves out of your way because they think you're going to interview them or something like that. It doesn't work in Ikea. Because <laughs> everyone in Ikea is looking at what they're going to buy, you know. And you go down the long and winding road, don't you? <laughs> and when I went on a Saturday, what a mistake. I was right in the middle of there like that. My feet didn't even touch the ground. 
I just felt like I was gliding just above the ground, you know, looking around. <laughs> oh, look, there's that computer table I wanted to get. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I purchased this little beauty from those magazines you used to get. Well, you still get them, don't you? I've forgotten what it's called now. It's quite a well-known one anyway. I thought, I've got to have that. <laughs> And boy, it's mine, the Rotato. <laughs> now, this may be the last time I ever do this, and it'll be recorded, which is fantastic. I'm really pleased because the sharpeners, which I've got to fit on, actually, shit. <laughs> I don't believe this. Not prepared at all. Turning up at 8 o'clock for a show. You may think I'm not professional, and I am, really. <laughs> no, I do care, I do. I mean, I'm not ultimate showbiz, I'll give you that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, I'm not uh, on uh, GMTV. Uh, that sort of thing makes me feel quite ill. But uh, we all watch it, don't we? Do, do you watch GMTV? Oh, great, present, great presenters on there, really good. <laughs> oh, I think I've put it straight on. I've done it with your glass. Well done. I'm going to do it here. OK, here we go. It's amazing what a few drinks can do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to drink. I used to drink. <laughs> I gave up about eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. I just go, I was really good at it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, too... Not loads, but just, you know, too much. Too much. What are you saying, Well, people used to say, I drank like a fish. But how much does a fish drink? I've never come down in the morning and found my aquarium empty. <laughs> <laughs> and all the fish at the bottom of the tank, all bloated, you know, going, oh, what a night we had, Norm. <laughs> Fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> and look, the good thing about using a Granny Smith, you get a good, strong peel. You know, you couldn't get that on an ordinary apple, a raven. It would just be wimpy and... But, you know, yeah, but with this, you can... <laughs> Please. <laughs> Ready? Oh, it's tough, isn't it? <laughs> We've had all that crap now, haven't we? With Bernard Manning and bloody Stan Boardman, all those people. They all say that, don't they? Oh, in my day, we did this. It's, we, I don't think the comedians today are like that. We're nicer people. We're nicer people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I think Stuart Lee is one of my favourite comedians, and he, he picks on subjects which is really brave, but he has the intelligence to back up what he's saying. Brilliant. I haven't got that intelligence. <laughs> That's why I do bags. <laughs> Stuart Lee couldn't do this. <laughs> He'd probably go, why? You know, <laughs> what, what's... He'd talk about the bag for half an hour before he even picked it up. He couldn't you know, pick it up. He wouldn't be able to do it. So if you're watching this, Stuart, I can always give you a lesson. That's a lovely bag, isn't it? Oh, wait, look at this. This brings back memories. Yeah, look. I got two daughters. Um... Yeah. I'm quite an old father. They're 17 and 15. What are you laughing at? Do you think I was not capable? I did have a bit of trouble last night. I couldn't find my, petite, my peeler, my... 
Yeah, I thought it was in Rotato. Sorry, I couldn't say it. Couldn't find it. And it turned out it was around a friend's. I'd obviously had a peeling night. Did you it out? Oh, no, I'd always go with it. Never, never, not on its own. Marks and Sparks. One of the smaller ones. Yeah, quite nice. You'd expect that, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's a nice movement. Nice movement. Here's a biggie. Now, I bought this as a purpose sport bag. It's called the Tuck and Tie. And there's four little illustrations there of how to tie a knot in it. And there's holes. They, they, there's holes at the top of the bag there. And, and you get that, and you go in there, like <laughs> that, and then you tie it on that one. What a load of bollocks. <laughs> hey, what a load of shit. I mean, it's just a bag, isn't it? Just tie the bloody bag and that's it. I mean, they just push their luck, don't they, these people? Look at all those, look at all those drinks on there in a line. Uh, you've done that for Comic Effect, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, that's good. It's super. I feel like bowling my world at them. Go on. I could, yeah, we could have a little. No, that's not going to be strong. No, it's not going to. No, ruin it. My, my, my... Yeah, just. Good little one. Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Great bottles, aren't they? Great bottles. Oh, crisis. Oh, the apple. No, you haven't got peeling. I told you not to eat the peel part. You should have just had the flesh. All I wanted you to do was take a bite out of it. <laughs> you know, you bloody... Now, it serves you right, young man. And look, these are the Lambeth recycling bags. <laughs> I thought I'd bring one of them. Never done this before. Never have tested these out on stage at all before. So this is a newie. Look, you see, that's fresh off the roll. Yeah. Yeah. The last roll I had were a bit dodgy. They were a bit... Uh, this one's the same. Look, that's softer there. Thicker plastic there. There's a fault. That's Lambeth for you. <laughs> oh, they're nice. I think we're going to get something here. Oh, yeah. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's too heavy. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I like it. I really like it. No, I really like it. So I'm going to put all my bags in there. No, I will be rude. Yeah, no, you, 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 what? Oh, didn't you? What happened there? Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, that's my cash bag that I take to the bank. <laughs> Imagine taking all your, your pennies. Oh, that's a light one. Yeah, you're right. Look, it's got whole, little holes in it there, everywhere. Don't you see? So a little child go in there, uh, fine. Not gonna. <laughs> oh! Oh, that's good, wasn't it? I think those holes are helping, actually. Yeah, they're not, because sometimes there's too much air gets in and, and it's going, whoa. And now some of it can escape and it eases it, relaxes the bag on its way down. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got very excited there. <laughs> it's funny when you watch people walking on the road. Have you ever seen, especially with blokes mainly, that trip over and pretend they haven't? <laughs> Have you seen that? Because you know, I saw a bloke once, he fell over, hit his knee on the curb, cut his trousers and there's blood spurting out, and he's still sort of walking along going, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> As if nothing's happened and, you know, if I, if I do, you know, I always carry a nice Kit Kat chunky bar with me. And if I, if I trip and fall, that doesn't bother me. I go down, fall down, just go, oh, like that. And I just get the chunky bar out. <laughs> just re relax, relax, you know, just get the old chunky bar out. <laughs> Finish the chunky bar. And by then, the pain has gone, you know, because you've relaxed your body and you feel OK. People will stare, sure. <laughs> Finish your bar, don't throw your rubbish. Keep your rubbish in your pocket, obviously. And up you get and go, 
right, let's just carry on with the journey. Then one day in the summer, I stand at the back door, you let out, you know, you last thing at night. Tonight, I'll probably do it, let the dogs out, and the security light will come on. And the, in the summer, like Daddy Long Legs, you know, quite clumsy old things, aren't they? Going, bouncing, it hit me straight in the forehead, bounced off my head without even sorry or sorry, mate. <laughs> straight into the kitchen, climbing up the wall, doing all that wall stuff and sliding down, you know, because their footwear isn't very good. <laughs> and I said, right, you're out of here, my friend. You know, sort of like Dirty Harry in a way. <laughs> get, you, get your ass out of here, boy. Like that, is it? Like that? No, it's not where it is. It? <laughs> and I grabbed him by the leg. And don't those legs come off easily? <laughs> hey? They come off so easily, don't they? And before long, I'd taken all his bloody legs off. And he was just there with his two wings and a little body and his little face. And I felt, I felt terrible about it. I said, I, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I really, you know, I said, it, this has turned horrible. He said, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> he started telling me they've got a short lifespan. They only live 11 days. And he was on day 10. <laughs> So I said, you're going to have the best day of your life tomorrow, my friend. And he did. He had the best day of his life. Nice meal in the morning, little eggs and bacon, little, little bits chopped up. And I put him in a little matchbox, the part that comes out, the drawer part of the matchbox, some cotton wool, and sort of tied him in, taped him in. <gasps> not, no, gently, not bloody. <laughs> so his wings were out, and he's sitting quite comfortably in a nice position like that and fitted some little wheels, four little wheels on. And, he, and I said, if you do one wing like that really hard, you'll turn left and, <laughs> and turn right. You know, and he, he learnt all that, and we, we put some cotton reels up, and he did some in and out, you know, <laughs> like driving and stuff. Then we had lunch, had a spot of lunch, you know, to drink and stuff. And then after lunch, I said, after lunch, you, we're going to have some real fun. And I said, you go right to the end of the table. And I said, I want you to go really fast. I said, go for it go right off the end of the table, and I said, get the wings right out like that. And I said, start to move them like that, and you can glide and move right, and he did, he took off, <laughs> glided round a few times, made some perfect landings, and, and it was about 4.30, he passed away, 4.30. <laughs> and uh, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> it started off with, I don't know, it's, Started with a kiss. No, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. That's a lyric to a song. It started. I did a gig in Hampstead about six or seven years ago, and there was a bag in the dressing room, and I thought I'll put that in my pocket. I'll take that on because that's what I'm like. I just and I took, got it, and I just went like that, and everyone was stunned. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I just went. And I've been, I've been doing it ever, ever, sorry? It was Hampstead. No, 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 it didn't matter. I've done it at the Albert Hall and Queen Elizabeth Hall and other... I've done it all over the country, Newcastle. I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> and people just went, oh, my God. Yeah, and, I, and it is beautiful, isn't it? You know? <laughs> and it's such a visual treat, don't you think? <laughs> I love this. I could have gone down the magician route. I've often said this. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> so, you know, just... Yeah. I found this um, two-inch self-tapper in the dressing room. <laughs> yeah, I just um, lying there, you know. I thought I'll have that. Uh, <laughs> Countless sunk head, Phillips, you know. Perks of the job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found, yeah, I found this uh, in the dressing room as well. Just a three amp fuse. <laughs> but I'm not going to get too excited about it until I've got it home and tested it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was thinking the best way, why couldn't nature help us keep not from being being obese and fat and putting on weight. Why can't we, our tongues, be the first thing to put on weight? 
and then we can't, oh, I can't eat. Well, you know, my tongue's got on weight. I can't eat. It's got weight. It all goes down. And that would keep control, wouldn't it, on the, on the food and stuff? Just an idea. I have ideas occasionally, and uh, some I had need to think through. I mean, um, hunting the homeless wasn't one of my best. <laughs> That wasn't one of my best ideas. I, mean, I, I just thought I wanted to take pressure off the foxes, but I didn't really think it through properly. <laughs> so I think if you're bored and you go to a hotel, they should have a button to press shower cap alert so someone could go and remove the shower cap so the bored person doesn't have to see the shower cap. <laughs> That's just a little thing. But what I'm thinking about the beanie hat is someone's in shower, they're having a shower and they decide to put the shower cap on and they look in the mirror and they go, hey, <laughs> wool, beanie hat, blokes, wankers, <laughs> bankers in the week, Clapham, musicians, yeah, they'll all wear, yeah, look cool, yeah, we do that. And, and that, it could have started like that, couldn't it? it you just don't know. You'll never know. It's like a jellyfish in a way, isn't it? <laughs> Look, imagine that jellyfish just... And David Attenborough, sort of... The jellyfish hovers above its prey. It strikes. <laughs> in no time at all, the prey is devoured. The jellyfish moves on. The jellyfish will not eat again for seven years. <laughs> That's the sort of thing it's saying, though, know, isn't it? <laughs> it's the sort of thing it's saying. <laughs> Apparently, jellyfish will be the last species on Earth, even if it freezes over or it goes on fire. They will be the last ones because they can survive in very cold water, very hot, and they're good survivors, and that'll be the last species on the planet, species on the planet. I, I, again, a, a little bit of information. Yeah. <laughs> That's a small fork, isn't it? <laughs> There's a couple of lines of dialogue. And after I've done that, put your hands up. <laughs> OK, you cunts. So what are you going to do now? <laughs> and the character. Oh, right, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Um, St David's Day was last Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah, daffodils, of course. But I'm not... Uh, I do find them a bit... They're not my favourite flower. <laughs> it's not the thing to say when you come to Wales, is it? To say that. Because they worry me. I, you know, sometimes I wonder if they are, in fact, a real flower at all, if they've come from aliens. <laughs> because when you look at them, they look as if they've got cameras in them. <laughs> And they're picking up sound and recording us, you know? Orwell Yeah, phones. sorry? Orwell Farms. Orwell, yeah, well, possibly. And um, <laughs> you always find them gathered round seats in parks, don't you, daffodils? So, you know, <laughs> work it out yourself, you know? <laughs> they're listening and watching us, and every sort of March, February, when, when they start coming out, end of Feb, March, April, then they go, don't they, then after that? Not my favourite flower, but I hope you don't find that an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, what are the best flowers? Uh, they're sort of chaffy, I think, as a flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, I found this very helpful, and I've also found it very helpful to, to I do this sometimes when I'm feeling a bit agitated or things aren't going well and I just need to calm down a bit and this helps me a lot. <laughs> he 
it really helps me centre myself. <laughs> so it's up to you. <sighs> they say, uh, the Americans say, I don't know what time I start, I'll keep an eye on this, I'm doing about 45 minutes. Seems a long time now, but it'll fly by. I'm sure. <laughs> it just flies by. Not for all of you, of course, but I mean, uh, you will find it'll go quickly. Got this from Wilco's. Little bird. <laughs> In the children's section. Dorian and Steve are the inventors of hide and seek. <laughs> well, originally the concept was just hide, but it was difficult to know how popular it was. There was no way of telling how many people were playing. It was when the seek element was introduced that things really took off for yeah. us. It was a shame, really, because I always thought that hide was the more superior game. Yes, it had an exciting zen quality. You could play it by yourself, and as an only child, it was a more enticing prospect. The public demand for our creation was insatiable. Mm. We were lost in the stampede to hide, the urge to seek. Hide and seek became so popular that we developed a board game version of it. What you have to do is throw the dice, and one player covers his eyes while the other player hides his counter. Then the other player has to try and find it. As you go around, you can buy different objects to help obscure your character. Bean, leaves, plank. Never really caught on. <laughs> Hide and seek was such a success, we found it very hard to scale those heights again. We tried other games. Twiggle, King of the Hutch, Monotony, like Monopoly, only set on contaminated waste ground with no planning emission. Blump. What was Blump again? You know, the two spotted balls and the large green hanky. And you had to put the hanky over the rotating tubes? No, no, you had to pick up the dice with the special tongs, throw the <laughs> dice to eliminate the player to your left. Oh, and then the dotted balls were soaked? No, first you had to elect Captain Twiggle, oh. then soak the balls. <laughs> yes, then you had to choose between Blump or Dash with no pickups or reset the dolly clock. Oh, if he goes blump or dash, he must collect six pronto vouchers before the dolly clock is repossessed by Major Muggle. <laughs> I'm knocking, I'm knocking. Blump. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we kept a photographic record of some of the best games. Well, I was behind the tree there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, Dorian has a great genius for hiding. He buried himself under the rockery here, mm. with just a little hole for breathing. Breathing. Mm. Yeah. In the shed. Compost heap. Yeah. Under the bed. Bed. There in cupboard. Cupboards. Bin. <laughs> Post box. Post box. Hole. In the, in the hole. No. Snow, snow, that was a cold game, isn't it? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs>